This is One on One. We are honored to have Tyler Matheson. He is the host of, uh, co-host of CNBC's Power Lunch, can be seen every day. 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Time. And who is it that you work with? I work with Sue Herrera, who is a longtime anchor at CNBC. Probably uh, was there from the very beginning of CNBC back in 1989, 1990. Describe the show. Well, we cover the markets uh, very intensively uh, every, every single day and the economy. We try and keep it very topical. Uh, what's happening now, what do you need to know to be smarter about what's going on in the world, specifically what's going on uh, in terms of economies around the world and the various markets, stocks, bonds, commodities, mm -hmm. currencies, so that you're completely read in, briefed for that day's news. I was telling Tyler uh, before we got into the show that we're taping this in the summer, as everyone knows, the summer of 2012 in June, so I don't want to date us, we'll show it many times. Um, so we're not going to try to predict the market. There are other shows that do that, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. But you do have some big concerns. Oh, and absolutely. They're not going to change. Yeah. One of the big concerns, let's go right at, we'll go to healthcare in a second. Social Security, you're saying, deal with it. No, we've got to deal with it. We've got to take steps to put it on a better footing. We probably have to extend uh, the retirement age for full benefits. Uh, there are whole classes of workers who don't pay into Social Security uh, right now. We probably have to bring them along uh, to social, into Social Security. We have to look at how Social Security benefits are indexed to inflation and whether we are using uh, really the right indexing benchmark for, that, uh, for those increases in benefits. And I think, frankly, we have to look at whether we have promised too much to next generations of workers and whether they have to get ready to have smaller benefits. Remember when Social Security, you don't remember, neither do I, frankly, when Social Security started out, it was basically a program to keep uh, senior citizens out of poverty, Right. period. And remember that the full benefit age for Social Security at that time was 65. Well, the average lifespan for an American male at that time was 61. Today? And today it's like 83 for someone who reaches age 65. So we're paying richer benefits longer than we ever intended. Tyler, I'm interesting is, is I hear you talk like this. Uh, Tyler and I live in the same hometown. We're involved in some of the same charities. And I ask myself, do people just come up to you because they know what you do? They, they know you're a, a money expert, a business expert, that you have this career, long, successful career as, as an anchor at CNBC. Do they just automatically just start asking you business finance questions? Not as much as they used to. I think people know. <laughs> Why? Because you one, say don't? <laughs> because number one, they know that I'm not a terribly smart investor in my, you know, it's like the, uh, it's, it's like the shoemaker's son. You know, I can't, I, I'm poorly shod myself. I'm not that good an investor. In fact, at CNBC, we have a policy that prevents us from investing in individual securities. Uh, stocks or bonds. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. We can invest in, in mutual funds, exchange But not individual? Funds. Not individual. I can't. Apart from the the owner of CNBC, which is Got Comcast, it. we have their stock in, That's different. in our plans. That's a different kind of thing. Uh, and frankly, the appetite today for the hot stock pick that was so much out there in the 1990s has waned a great deal. People, people realize that that's a that's a fool's game. Yes. They remember, and many of them have been burned. Want to go to Vegas? Go to Vegas. Go to Vegas. Hey, go buy Facebook. Well, we all remember <laughs> oh. what happened with Facebook exactly. when it came public. Were you surprised at that? The way they went that, the way it went down when, when the IPO happened? I, I was. I thought that it would go a lot higher on its first day of trading than it ultimately did. It opened at 38, it went up to 42, and then it, it began to crater. But I would, I would say this. That stock was brought to market at an outlandishly high price. When you measure a stock's price or value and whether it is a fair price or not, you look at the price of the shares versus the earnings per share of the company. And the market sells at a price of something like 14 times earnings. Well, that stock was coming out at more than 100 times earnings. So that told me that there was a lot of helium in that balloon. Uh, that was lifting it up. And you've got to be able to grow your business so fast mm. to justify a hundred times price uh, that virtually no company can do that. And, and by the way, I think 
Facebook's hottest growth is probably behind it. Done. Not done, but that the fastest growth is behind it. Got it. Kyle, let me do this before doing any other economic and business stuff. Tell us about your family. I know that your wife's involved in the business big yeah. time. Yes, she is. She's a producer of the of, of the fab Joanne, the fabulous fourth hour of the Today Show with uh, Kathy Lee Gifford and Hoda Kotb. The shy and retiring. The Kathy shy Lee and retiring. <laughs> and, and, and they serve wine on the set. I noticed that yes. we have uh, Mayor no. Bloomberg's good water Yes, here, that's but. the only thing the mayor allows to be sold. Or, or uh, That's right. That's the only thing we can drink in Lincoln Center. So she's uh, been uh, at the Today Show for, uh, for quite a few years, uh, and, and, and happily so. I have a six-year-old uh, who earlier today went to the Today Show to see... Justin Bieber there, so big. a big day for him. We're very lucky. Uh, we get uh, lots of uh, really wonderful experiences as a result of what we do, and we're very grateful for that. And I have a 19-year-old uh, from a prior marriage who is a uh, uh, college student at Temple University. We have a lot in common that way. Yeah, 19-year-old yeah. from yeah. previous marriage. The 19-year-old is the challenge, believe me. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, all of ours are yeah. a challenge. Yeah. Let's talk about the fact that you've talked a lot about uh, the health care piece. Now, as we do this program, Supreme Court has not made a decision as to which parts of the um, federal legislation on health care they will either set aside, not set aside. We don't know what's going to happen. Forget about what that. We don't know what it's going to be. Yeah. Still going to be around. What do you think the larger economic question is? Well, I... I For businesses. I, well, I think that it, it... What happened to your raise over the past decade? your raise went to your health care benefits. That mm. was your raise because those benefits, uh, usually paid in large measure by your employer, have gone up in price so much. So if you thought your income wasn't going up, well, yes, it has, but you just haven't felt it. It's the employer portion of your health care benefits. That's where that extra money, such as there was extra money, went. As a longer-term issue, Steve, I, I believe very firmly uh, apart from whatever happens with so-called Obamacare, that the solution in health care has to be focused on individuals shouldering a greater percentage of their health care costs. Insurance ought to be used for what insurance ought to be used for, and that is to protect you against the catastrophic expense. You don't buy insurance generally, or at least you shouldn't buy insurance, uh, to cover the leaky faucet in your house. To not what insurance is for. That's not what it's for. It's for the moment when the tree comes in uh, through the roof or the electrical fire happens. You, you, you try and buy insurance for the catastrophic event, not the dent in the car, the real damage to the car. And that's what insurance needs to become. At the same time, we need to know more what really works in healthcare. What are the outcomes for various procedures, tests, and so forth? And what is the true price or the true cost of that service? It has to be transparent. We need to know what it costs and what it works so that then the individual can make a, a smart, informed decision on what to do and which practitioner to go to. Before I let you have got to give me 40 seconds on defense spending. You're big on this. Well, we spend uh, something like $700 billion a year on, on defense, and, and, uh, and, and much of that is justified. But we spend more on defense than the next 19 countries combined do on expense, uh, on, on defense. And you have to go, as Willie Sutton said, where the money is. Why they rob banks. And that's why they rob banks. And, and we, have to, we have to be thoughtful. We have to not let our guard down. But the fact of the matter is that I believe, this is my opinion, that the fact that we have spent so much money on defense causes us to use our military in ways that probably, in the long run, we shouldn't do. I think we have to look at all of our expenditures and all of the promises that we've made uh, to various constituencies, whether it's public workers, uh, and the money that we spend on defense is certainly a big part of it. You want to hear more from Tyler Matheson. He's a co-anchor of Power Lunch on CNBC, Monday through Friday, every day from 1 to 2, with uh, Sue Herrera. Good stuff. Thank you for joining us on public television. You added a great deal. Thank you very much. See you around town. You got it. All See right. you. A one-on-one -on -one from the Tisch WNET studio at Lincoln Center. We'll continue right after this. Stay with us. Thank you, Tyler. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center.
funding has been provided by Caldwell College, New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, auto insurance, homeowners insurance, and banking under the principle of stewardship. Qualcare Inc., a local managed care company covering 750,000 New Jersey residents. And by Verizon Communications. Promotional support provided by The Record, North Jersey's trusted source and NorthJersey.com. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.